Good morning and welcome to this service for Sunday the 4th of July. Today I'm in St Peter's Church in Elford. Fitting, really. A place where generations have come to worship and share their faith with others, to talk about their faith, to learn from one another. It's fitting because in our readings and in our talk later, we'll hear about Jesus preparing and then sending out his disciples to speak of God's love, to speak of salvation for all when we truly repent. I like to think of it really as an opportunity to seize the moment. Last week, Reverend Nicky spoke about stepping out in faith. This week, we continue to do that, but we also do it with an urgency, an urgency that has seen generations come to worship in all of our churches, not just St Peter's, and all over the world for that matter, because the word, the news of God's kingdom has been spread from generation to generation. So come and join us, and I hope that you enjoy the service. So, an opening prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you today just as we are. We give you thanks and praise that you are all we need. You are enough. Thank you that you love us so much and provide everything we need for the journey of life. You didn't promise that following you would be easy, but we thank you for the care and the support that you give us. Thank you that when we come to you empty, your arms reach out to embrace us. Amen. The reading for today is taken from the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel's call to be a prophet, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke to me, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, and whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 12, beginning at verse 2. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up 
the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Jose, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour, except in their own town, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their disbelief. Then he went about among the villages, teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, all of our readings relate in one form or another to the spread of the word of the kingdom of God by the power and the grace of God. In Ezekiel, we heard, He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak with you. The Spirit entered into me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet and I heard him who spoke to me. Ezekiel's initial response had been to fall onto his face, to prostrate himself in the presence of God. But God tells him to stand up and in effect gives him his marching orders, you could say. And then we hear that the spirit or ruer entered into him. Rua or spirit can mean wind or breath as well. This is God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, given to Ezekiel to enable him to do God's work. And then we heard uh, a reading from Paul, 
in his letter, second letter to the Corinthians. And Paul speaks of the power of Christ, giving him the strength to boast, as he calls it, to speak of God's love. We know, don't we, that Paul suffered spiritual and physical suffering. Clement of Rome tells us that Paul was imprisoned seven times. But despite this, he remained faithful to God. And finally, the Gospel reading from Mark chapter 6 occurs just after the healing of the woman with a hemorrhage and the raising of Jairus' daughter. Two different stories about faith. Unlike the two miracles that we heard in last week's Gospel, today the first parable is about the lack of faith. By the time Jesus had returned to his native home of Nazareth, the stories of his healings and miracles have spread far and wide. And I guess the people in his hometown had also heard of his popularity. And you would have perhaps expected them to have welcomed him with open arms, much as we welcome heroes back today, perhaps after the Olympics or, or some such event. But in this case, it just wasn't what happened. As far as the people of his hometown were concerned, he was the son of a carpenter, the son of Mary and Joseph not the Son of God. So we hear that Jesus was surprised by the unbelief of the crowd. Not because he was expecting to be welcomed as a hero. You recall, the one thing that can be said about Jesus is that he demonstrates humility. He's humble in everything, the servant of all. The problem here seemed to be that the villagers thought that Jesus was acting above his station. A son was expected in those days to follow in his father's footsteps and not go beyond them. So if the boy's father was a carpenter, then the son was to be a carpenter as well. Nothing more. When the people heard Jesus teaching in the synagogue, they were on the verge perhaps of applauding him, but they didn't because they viewed him as a carpenter. What they failed to see was that Jesus was following his father's footsteps, his heavenly father. And so because of that lack of faith, they missed the greatest miracle of all. But Jesus took the rejection in his stride and continued his ministry and added to it by sending out the disciples. Sending them out with just the barest of essentials, a cloak and a staff. He wanted them to trust God for their needs. And he also wanted them to stay at the first house that offered them a place to stay. They were to do that in each town rather than move from place to place. And we told that he sent them out in pairs. 
Why would that be, I wonder? Well, I thought of three reasons. Firstly, a partner provides strength, protection, and companionship. Secondly, a partner can provide credibility. And finally, a partner can hold someone accountable so that they're less likely to succumb to temptation. It's difficult, isn't it? But Jesus wanted the disciples to know that they would be travelling the open roads of Palestine penniless and expected to be welcomed with open arms, especially in their hometowns. He also wanted them to know that the gospel message was a hard one to preach, not always popular and not easy, and not always automatically earning respect as at home. When Jesus sent out the twelve, he was sending them out prepared for failure. As far as Jesus was concerned, home was the starting point, not the destination, but the start of the story and the start of the journey. And his point was that the story cannot continue, unfold and develop within the confines of family and home. So he sent his disciples out, requiring them to step out in vulnerability. The message is that the journey is just as important as the home in Christian faith and spirituality. That's the big thing about God. And we're reminded of it by Augustine, that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in God. It is God who is our true home, our eternal home, as a hymn puts it. And so any other home, any place which makes us feel as if we can really rest and relax, but which is not yet resting in God, is in fact deluding and misleading us. We all need good homes, don't we? Sadly, some people are not able to achieve that. But at some point in our life, we need, as Christian people, to realise that what we thought of as home is not really home. That what we thought of as rest was similarly not really rest. There's a massive difference between a haven and heaven. What a difference that letter E makes. And so the story of Jesus and his ministry changes gear and comes to life in a new way when we hear the words from Mark's Gospel, he went about among the villagers. They're words of venture and adventure, vital words. And we need to step out too, because God's grace can only be really effective when we're opened up by experience to its possibilities. The walk of discipleship is dynamic. 
It's not about watching the telly with the curtains drawn in a centrally heated house. It's not about watching songs of praise or similar programme and the family joining in. Jesus demands of each one of us that we embrace our faith as a venture of vulnerability, as an adventure. And it means that we will be perpetually challenged to step out of our comfort zones and into the territory of pilgrimage and mission. Just as Ezekiel, Paul and many others were called to do. Please don't misunderstand me here. Homes should and can be lovely, warm and welcoming. Hometowns are great. And our families are far more important to us than we probably ever fully recognise, perhaps until it's too late. But they're not the whole picture the whole story. The reading from Mark's Gospel is a challenging one and it warns us against the dangers of comfort and complacency. At the same time as it promises real hope for the most astonishing and amazing fulfilment. Jesus wants us to be nurtured and healthy, and to a degree, comfortable, but not too comfortable. And if we're outraged by that suggestion, well, maybe it's because we feel we have too much to lose by taking another risky step of faith than we'd ever taken before. And if that's right, well, maybe we really do need to take that step. So come on, let's step out in faith and be amazed by what happens next. Amen. So we come to our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are only the body of Christ because your spirit binds us together with your love. We pray for real concern and love for one another, supportive and encouraging, without malice or bickering, so that we can be sent out strong to spread your word. Heavenly Father, all places in this world are answerable to your authority. Much evil has been allowed to flourish through the silence of other people. Give us all the courage to speak out your truth whether it's popular or not. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be in all our listening, at home, at school, or at work. May we give our full attention to you and to one another that we may grow wiser through each conversation. And Father, we pray for those who today are in pain, who are suffering and have no one to confide in, no one to listen to. 
no one to listen to them. We pray, Lord, that your love would enfold them, your peace calm them, and your healing power transform them. Pray too for those who care for those in need, wherever they may be. Heavenly Father, you stay with us through the whole of our life on earth and prepare us for the life that is to come. We commend to your keeping all those who have died recently. And we pray too for those who mourn the death of loved ones. Finally, Father, we thank you for making your ways known to us and for guiding us into your truth. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray in the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
So we come towards the end of our service for today. I do hope that you will take away with you some of the words from the music, the prayers, or the readings that have touched your heart and caused you to want to step out in faith and seize the moment to tell all that you meet of God's glorious kingdom and his love for all of us. So we close our service today with a prayer. Lord, you sent your disciples into the world to share your word with those in need. May we approach this coming week with a similar desire. You sent them carrying little but trusting much. May we live this week with a similar attitude. May our lives be less about us and our needs and more about you and your love and care for all people wherever they are. May we love as you love. And we ask in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your day and I look forward to meeting with you again soon.